Some people argue that since the invention of photography, war has become a battle of images. Perhaps for this reason, two of the most iconic scenes in Come and See feature photographers taking photographs of the protagonist, both representing two moments of his life and two different perspectives of the war. The first occurs when Fleora enlists in the partisan troops and joins the camp. Here, he is photographed first by a comrade, who, amidst laughter and mockery, imitates Hitler. With delicate precision, the photographer orchestrates the composition, directing the models with meticulous care, akin to a fastidious director before capturing the shot. This moment epitomizes the most theatrical and artificial aspect of the film, as characters pose unnaturally like statues, accompanied by the strains of The Sacred War, a Soviet patriotic anthem that became a rallying cry for the defense of the Soviet Union against Nazi Germany. This occurs at the 20 minute mark of the film. At this point, viewers might believe that they are being prepared for a movie that glorifies the Soviet Union. In fact, Alan Klimov, the director, recounts that the Soviet administration approached him on the 40th anniversary of the great victory, wanting a film that precisely glorified this event with a propagandistic focus. However, to be fair, it's quite the opposite. Throughout the movie, the focus is not on heroes or glory, rather on the victims and the tragedy. That's why halfway through the movie, the image of Hitler resurfaces again. After enduring bombing and multiple deaths, Fleur rests in a camp of surviving villagers who mockingly create a Hitler mannequin. Hitler, once the consequences of war are seen, becomes a walking memento mori, a symbol of death and destruction. That's why he can only instill terror or revulsion in the survivors who spit on him and curse him. As you can see, the language and form of these sequences are diametrically opposed to what we saw in the scene of the Sacred War. This is because Klimov plays precisely with our expectation of the experience that war will be for us, the audience, which is analogous to the experience that Flyora will go through, transitioning from being a young fanatic to one horrified by the conflict. Just as Hitler is no longer a subject of ridicule, but one of fear, a war photograph is no longer a source of pride. That's why its significance is heightened, as it unfolds immediately after the movie's climax, when a stable full of children and villagers locked inside is set on fire by the Nazis. In an act of cruelty, a Nazi soldier asserts that everyone can escape except the children. This isn't just a display of their inhumanity, but also signifies something fundamental. Fleora can escape because the war has stripped the innocence from his skin. He is no longer a child. If the Spanish painter Goya depicted the disasters of war as a nightmare from the underworld, the climax of Come and See is a glimpse of hell that has infiltrated our reality. By then, in the lingering aftermath of the massacre, a photographer captures an image of Fleur as if he were a war trophy. As I mentioned earlier, the two photographs represent two states in the character's life. The first, much more artificial and contrived, glorification, and at one point, propaganda. The second, more real and raw, emphasized by the movie, human misery. The title of the film orders us to watch it because, like Ellen Klima, both sides of the war are aware of the power of imagery and its representation in the conflict. Through such gestures, including scenes like these, the director underscores this idea. But there is a third photograph present in the film, which is even more significant, because it is also a third reference to Hitler. It is a portrait of him with the title of Liberator. After the two previous anticipations, finally the image of real flesh and blood Hitler appears, outside of the previous parody or mortification. First, and prior to the massacre, for a few seconds, in the hands of a villager who is forced to carry his portrait. But it is in the last moments of the footage at the end where Hitler's image takes on a more prominent role. Here, Fleora, after experiencing horror, takes up his rifle and begins to shoot at the portrait. It is after the image of this real Hitler, beyond the previous memetics, that this rectangle of reality works as a gateway to images belonging to the real world, to documentary images. Each shot shatters the glass like its director shatters fiction, where we look images of the Holocaust, many taken by the Nazis, as well as other propaganda videos being recontextualized, turning them against themselves, taking on a different connotation because we are not seeing them as separate, individual images, but within a narrative and an atmosphere that endows them with additional meaning and adds a new dimension.
In this sense, it's worth recalling the ideas that writer Susan Sontag had about war images and their representation. According to Sontag, if historically war had been approached in art through evocation with painting, theater, or music, with the advent of photography, both still and in motion, there was now the possibility of giving materiality to the facts. In Come and See, these images, which could well have been taken by the movie's photographers, take on a new meaning. Klimov places them against their original intention. On their own, they would have value. Placed in the movie, they take on a new one. These images are no longer a celebration. Now, they are a warning. <laughs>